when a past owner of today's haunted location decided to throw people's warnings aside and stay overnight alone with no one to offer support should things go wrong. They soon realised that the property offered much more than a beautiful location. It also had its own ghostly residence too. Hey there dissectors and welcome to another haunting episode. I'm feeling much better after going away for a week and lucky me coming back with Covid. So today we're going to delve into the dark history of Balsam Mountain Inn which is located in North Carolina, known to many as the Stanley Hotel of the South. The story of this fabulous inn begins in the early 1900s when Joseph Kenny and Walter Christie, two brothers-in-law, decided to journey from Georgia to North Carolina with big dreams of starting their own business. They both wanted to take full advantage of the natural beauty of the area and with their love of fishing, hunting and other outdoor pursuits, they opened up a modest boarding house which offered these services as well as great home-cooked food. In no time at all, their business was thriving and by 1908, construction was completed on their new, improved hotel named Balsam Mountain Inn. The new hotel offered about 100 rooms, each having its own porch that took in the extensive views. After a time though, other mountain inns were struggling due to expensive upkeep costs, as well as succumbing to fires. But Joseph and Walter had done their research well and nestled their hotel in a great location. It was between Plot Balsam and Richland Balsam, two large mountain ranges that are said to be 3,000 feet above sea level. The Balsam Gap proved to be a great location for railroad tracks, becoming home to one of the busiest railroad stations in the east. So, with the constant foot traffic and long-term guests who liked to stay during the summer months, the men were making plenty of money. And in time, the charm of the property earned it a new nickname, one that has stuck to this day, Grand Old Lady. Like any advancements we make, there is always a consequence. With less people using the railroads and interstates becoming more common, the Balsam Gap became quite a lonely place, with the Grand Old Lady becoming a sad shadow of her former self as she fell into disrepair. Then one day, while out hiking with a friend, Merrily Teasley, can I just say what an awesome name she has. Anyway, Merrily Teasley came across the old hotel and fell in love with its charms. After years of renovation work taking place and Merrily throwing her heart and soul into the inn, by 1991, the first two floors were reopened for business, with the third floor becoming available in 1996. Now there were only 50 rooms, but they had private bathrooms and other modern amenities. And just like that, things changed again when in December 2017 an experienced hotel owner by the name Marcina Venchenska decided to purchase the inn. Sorry if the pronunciation is wrong on the name. More extensive updates were needed to the property and so there was new plumbing installed, electrical work, heating etc. Until finally in April 2018 the inn reopened but this time with the new name the Grand Old Lady Hotel as of January 2019. But Marshina was not the type of woman who believed in ghost stories and other fairy tales, so ignored all the rumours that she'd heard about the inn. Paranormal stories that would have sent shivers down other people's backs, making them think twice about taking on such a place. Instead, Marshina decided to get a feel for the place on her own, staying overnight. Everything was calm, until suddenly, as she lay soundly asleep in bed, the sheets were violently pulled from her body. You can imagine the shock that she felt and now, terrified, she lay in bed trying to get back to sleep as her mind struggled to process what had just happened. By the morning, the poor lady was exhausted. But did daylight offer safety from the paranormal? Heck no! Instead, as she lay in bed trying to summon the energy to get up, the sound of someone's nails scratching against the neighbouring wall could be heard clearly. But as you know, there was no one else in the hotel with Marshina. So what do you do with a hotel that you've now purchased and discover is haunted? Well, she was really concerned that paranormal activity would be bad for business and scare away potential customers. A priest was hired to rid the place of any spirits, but all it did was intensify the activity and so a new plan was needed. In the end, a local paranormal investigation team was summoned to the location where they are said to have communicated for hours with the many spirits said to reside at the inn. 
one of the spirits that came through quite often has been nicknamed the Sheriff. It is believed that in 1928, the young man was shot outside the hotel while visiting. Knowing the poor man was near death, his body was carried up to room 205, where he slowly bled to death. Now in life, the Sheriff was said to be a very attractive guy who loved the attention of the ladies. So it's not much of a shocker to discover that his ghost mostly becomes active around women who stay in room 205, way more than with any of the men. So, He's a pervy entity, you might say. But the other spirits of the Balsam Mountain Inn are quite active too, with guests reporting ghostly footsteps heard in the hallways, as well as a presence that lingers outside guests' rooms. People have even heard voices and names being whispered in the middle of the night, which is really creepy as hearing a disembodied voice is bad enough, but in the dark too. That's a nope. Then there are the shadow figures that are seen throughout the hotel too, in the, in the hallways and even rooms where people have witnessed black masses move around on their own volition and are considered spectres. And just like the horrible fright that Martian experienced, guests have been awoken in the middle of the night by a mischievous entity who loves nothing better than stripping the sheets off the bed of sleeping guests. So when you can't ignore the fact that the hotel is haunted, why not embrace it? Registers have been left in each room that is thought to be haunted so that visitors can write down their experiences if they have them. There are also small iron signs above rooms that are thought to be active that simply state the word welcome. Now I'm not sure if the welcome is for the ghosts or the guests. With all this activity, as well as disembodied giggling, objects moving on their own and doors slamming, would you believe that the place has been resold again? Due to COVID hitting business hard, like it did everywhere else in the world for that matter, the hotel was discovered on the market on LoopNet at a price of 2.5 million in 2021. But don't despair dissectors, as the property has been purchased again, this time by Waynesville residents Rodney and Lorraine Connard. Rodney said, we hated to see it fall into disrepair and saw a chance to save it and hopefully bring it back to the community and one of the first things they did after the sale went through was change its name back to Balsam Mountain Inn, a move that has gone down well with locals. Lorraine stated, it was a pleasant surprise how much community excitement there was having it changed back to Balsam Mountain Inn, getting it reopened and getting the community involved again. And with the new takeover, the couple have also lovingly restored the property back to its former glory, so that hopefully, for many years to come, visitors can enjoy the beauty of the location, the history, and the paranormal guests that have decided to stick around. So dissectors, what do you think of today's haunted location? Would you love to take in the mountain views and enjoy a little spooky company for good measure? I think it would be a great place to visit and hopefully it will enjoy many more years of adventures, storytelling and things that go bump in the night. So until next time, my friends, stay safe out there.